Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to Live Q&A, January 20th, 2020. Ooh, 2020. Is that really true? Man, it's already January 20th. This is craziness. I'll tell you what though, writing 2020 on documents and stuff, this is the least I've messed up, I think, every year because I remember... That it's 2020. I don't know why. Like I would instead of you know 2019, I was still writing 2018, etc. But for 2020, I'm okay. Alrighty. Well, we're gonna be taking questions. Roy, if you can hit that last light switch, I'm gonna flip that one on there. Yeah. yeah. Woo! Brightness. I'm back. All right. Anyway. Um, so if you have questions, I'll take them in the comments and I'll answer as much as I can. Let's see. Looking sharp. Well. That's only, I got a new vest from Sears. Uh, they were going out of business, unfortunately, for them. So I went and looked for a vest my size, and there was one. Um, so uh, let's see. It's been a good, a good weekend. Our Kickstarter is live. If you have not seen that yet, check out DiceTowerKickstarter.com. It's still going on for a couple weeks, and we're going to be adding some new stuff to it soon. I'll be posting an update later today when I get a chance. I'm um, working on uh, several things. We got the cruise. Dice Tower Cruise is starting this week on Friday, so I got to get ready for that. Um, also, I'm going to be, you know, we, I've just recorded a bunch of videos this morning that will be going live this week. And later on today, our top 100 games of all time is almost finished. 20 through 11 hot games. And then next tomorrow will be our uh, 10 through 1. Am I excited about the cruise? Of course. What games am I hoping to play in the cruise? Do not care. Um, I, uh, I'm happy to play anything. Uh, well, I shouldn't say anything, but almost anything. Uh, what place are the best place to eat on the ship? Well, the main dining room is the best place for me to eat. So I like eating there, even for breakfast. A lot of people don't eat there for breakfast. They go to the buffet. I'd rather eat in the dining room. Uh, what games have you heard on the other's top 100 that you wish you had played? Well, Madara's one for sure. I do need to get that one played. Uh, what am I most looking forward to, interested about in the new Frosthaven release? Is that this? Is that tomorrow that that's going up live? Or is that February? I can't remember. I think there's a big Kickstarter going live tomorrow. Although I don't remember what it is. Eh, well, whatever. Uh, I'm sure it will pop up at some point. Uh, for Frosthaven, I'm sure it will just be a fun game. I can't say much more about it. Uh, I'll wait till the Kickstarter comes. I haven't thought a whole lot about it. Will there be an Isle of Cat, an Isle of Cats review, and if so, when? Well, sooner than you might think. The full review of it won't be coming for a couple weeks, but I, I did a, a preview of it, which you'll see coming uh, later this week, and also. Our uh, Dice Tower podcast, which goes live tomorrow, I talk about it in that one. Just play Clank in Space, and I love it. Do you think it's because I love Marvel Legendary so much? I don't think they're very similar, other than they're both deck builders. Uh, did you see 1917 in theaters? No, I actually took my kids to see uh, Dr. Doolittle, which I really enjoyed. Um... It was a very entertaining movie. It was very family friendly. Robert Downey Jr. played a different character than Iron Man, which was nice. He played a very eccentric Dr. Doolittle, which I thought worked. We have a picture of the actual stuffed kit before the end of Kickstarter. Unfortunately, it's looking like it's not because of the Lunar New Year. We're not going to be able to get that stuff back from there as, 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 as much as we would like to. Jason mentioned no shorts in the dining room on the cruise. Is that true or what? Maybe it's true. I don't know. I very rarely wear shorts, so it's not a it's not a thing for me. I know you can wear it in like the buffet, so you can always go eat there. Um. Well, man, I'm already caught up on questions. What is that all about? So let me think of something to talk about while I'm waiting for more questions to come up. 1917 looks like an interesting movie. I might wait till I see it. I, I don't go see a lot of movies in theaters, and I, and I almost never go by myself. I shouldn't say almost. I don't know that I've ever gone to a movie theater by myself, ever. So I'd have to go see it with somebody, and I usually go see something with my kids or my wife. 
What is the dimension of your game table? I had it written down at some point, but I don't remember what it is. If you had more space, would you prefer a larger one? Yes, I'd prefer a longer one. Not a wider one. It's, it's a pretty good width, as is. Um, but a, a longer one I would probably get. Um, I don't know. Uh, a new app for Dice West. I don't know anything about that. Um, trying to play a campaign of the King's Dilemma. Do you have recommendations for getting a group together regularly as a 40-something adult? I don't know what that means necessarily. I mean, I don't think getting a group together matters about the age. You just got to do it. You, you do it or you don't do it if people are going to commit or not. And can people drop in and out of King's Loma? For sure. You might have to bring them up to speed and be like, so here's some of the stuff that's happened. When was the last time the Dice Tower crew went ice skating? Uh, <laughs> for me, I think it's been <laughs> four years. Uh, you know, I didn't know how to, I grew up in Pennsylvania, and I didn't know how to skate at all. Um, but I, when I went to college, they required some PE classes. So the first one I took was soccer, which was not a wise choice on my, on my part. Because I really thought, when I got to the soccer class, I really thought that the coach would stand up and he'd be like, this is a soccer ball. But instead he was like, all right, we're going to line up over here and do these drills. And it's like, oh. And I was always... I was always very embarrassed by the whole thing. I was so bad at soccer. And, in fact, I was picked last consistently whenever there was uh, team skirmishes. I hate it. We often played shirts for skins, and I hate it being skins because my bones stuck out. I, I have the opposite problem now. But um, I just didn't like soccer at all. So then the second semester, I just was like, I'm going to do something different. And they had an ice skating class, and I thought, oh, I'll take ice skating. I might learn to ice skate. And I did. It taught me how to ice skate. I'm not a great skater by any means, but I know how to ice skate now. And that was pretty cool. So I learned to skate in Florida. What games are you excited most to play with Melody? Well, it doesn't matter. Melody's back in college as of Saturday. So I'll wait till she comes back over the summer to play some more games with her. Um, going to the cinema on your own is therapeutic. Maybe not for me. I just watch a movie at home. I don't need to go out and pay money uh, on my own. I, I, I don't think I would like that very much. I like going out with people. If I'm going to be by myself, I'd rather just stay at home. Did Isle of Cats make it to the Dice Hour Library? Indeed it did. You can go online to Board Game Geek at DT Library. The library is finished. I've already printed out the books uh, for it. In fact, actually, an, an extra Isle of Cats is being added to the library, or Hot Games Table, actually. Um, but uh, Isle of Cats did make it in the library for sure. No, I don't think anything else is going to make it in the library. We'll see. If anything shows up today... I don't plan on any game showing up. There's a possibility a game or two will show up in the next two days that make the cruise, but I doubt it. Do I have a favorite cheese or a top 10 cheese ranking? I don't, I know there's a lot of like super fancy cheeses. I just don't often eat them. They're really expensive and I can't afford them. So my favorite cheeses are the, uh, the uh, boar's head cheeses that Publix has in their deli usually. And they have a chipotle cheese and a five pepper cheese. I also like there's a um, horseradish uh, cheddar. Is it horseradish cheddar cheese? There's a lot of different cheeses I like. There's a dill pickled cheese that I like a lot. Um, of the normal cheeses, Gouda and Pepper Jack are my favorites of those. Uh, I do like Swiss, though. Swiss is really good melted on a sandwich. Anyhow, I don't have top ten. If you could play one lifetime game, what would it be? Like from the movie channel? And people are sad and then they're happy because they get together romantically? Or do you mean life style game? If I could only play one, I'd probably pick the one that's highest on my top 100 list. Um, can you tell us more about the metal dice? Uh, well, I don't have any here to show you. Um, but they're in the other room, unfortunately. They're aluminum dice. I really like rolling them. They look really good. They're pretty solid, too. They're really cool. I like them a lot. 
top 10 board game cafes would be awesome if I went to enough to do a top 10. I've been to some fantastic board game cafes. I would have to go to a lot to do a top 10 list for sure, though. Uh, let's see here. What age is the best age to try to introduce games to your kids? Yes. Uh, should I wait for the new Splendor Marvel or buy the Splendor that's out now? I don't know if the Splendor Marvel is changing anything or not. How can I pledge for two different rewards in the Kickstarter? Yeah, this is something I wish Kickstarter would change. Uh, just let people pledge for multiple pledges. It seems like it's an obvious thing. But anyhow, um, you can just pledge for, for example, Rising Sun. And if you want Gloomhaven, you can just add it on in the pledge manager. Afterwards, you'll be able to add it on. What did you think of Return to Dark Tower? The playthrough looked fun. It was fun, indeed. How do you decide what games you re-review re for your look-back videos? You mean on my Wednesdays, I just go back a year, five years ago, ten years, and look at the reviews I did that specific week. So it's pretty much all of them. Um... Why didn't you add the experience box to your play of the new time stories? Because it doesn't matter, right? The experience is, I, I, I went through it. I actually have it sitting right over there. The experience box, the, before your first mission, all you do is you hand out a character to each person. And that's a character that you will be. has nothing to do with the first mission. You play the first mission. Then when the mission's over, then you come back on a mission and then you see the overall story. That's a very different thing. But after the very first game of Time Stories, we were like, yep, we're not playing the second one, so why would we care about that in-between mission stuff? Also, that in-between mission stuff I'm super salty on because they ended it so poorly in the first one. Now, I heard some people have said, well, it was it's like a cliffhanger at the end of a season. Yeah, but seasons don't take three years to complete, and cliffhangers aren't basically just come back next season. Balderdash, after nine things I want some closure and there was none if they had showed some closure and then they said then and oh but the bag I got away and he'll be back fine but that's not what they did the overall story I, I, I've lost complete interest in it how much harder is it getting to come up with new top 10 list ah not too bad I have uh, document sitting on my computer right now where I'm working on top 10 lists ideas for this year. Also, we just redo them, a lot of them. You know, after a certain time, you can redo things. Which of the Smash Up expansions do you like the best? Um, I don't know. I'll do a top 10 Smash Up expansion someday. Or I'll rank all the Smash Up stuff. This week I'm doing a ranking of all the Ticket to Ride stuff, so maybe I'll do something like that eventually. What type of cheese do you use when you make mac and cheese? Whatever cheese I feel like at the point in time. Uh, when I made mac and cheese last time, what cheese did I use? It was cheddar, but I think I put in some pepper jack too. I don't remember. Don't roll metal dice on boards. Sure. Tom, if I contributed $50 to the Kickstarter and I chose Dice Tower, do I only get the Dice Tower or can I get something on the lower tier as well? Now, you only get the Dice Tower. You can add other things. Look, that's an overpriced Dice Tower. I will not pretend otherwise. Everything on the, on the Dice Tower Kickstarter is overpriced. We're not trying to give you a lot of stuff. We're not a store. That's a gift that we're giving to people who support the Dice Tower. We're hoping that if you pay $50 for Dice Tower, that we're giving you $50 of content throughout the year and you get a Dice Tower on top of that. And if you think of it that way, um, it, hopefully that makes it easier or easier to not support. Of course, some people don't want to support Dice Tower, and I completely understand that. Um, but that's, that's, that's what our goal is overall. Uh, are there any games that are just mad with the rules as they are written, but with a single rule change, it makes you love the game? Um... Well, I know the, a, a simple rule change for Viticulture and a single rule change for Oh My Goods both made me go from, for, in Viticulture, I thought the game was okay. 
once we changed the rule, Viticulture went to one of my favorite games um, with Oh My Goods. I thought the game was not that good. With the rule change, I thought it was better. Both those rules, though, were official rules brought in by the people who ran those games uh, and are now in now current versions of those games. Um, for homemade rules, there might be one I don't know off the top of my head. Sam looks happy with his new job. It seems to fit him. Sure. Um, who did you play Risk Legacy with? I played it with a bunch of different people, actually. Uh, Sam was involved. Melody was involved. Sam's son was involved. Some other kids from school. It was mostly with kids and Sam. What are your thoughts about Fantasy Flight stopping their Star Wars Destiny line? Well, I mean... I guess it's not selling as well, so they stopped doing it. I know it's an expensive game to produce. Uh, I guess there's a lot out there for people to play, so I mean, it's not like the game has stopped being fun for people. How big do you want the library to be? Is there any kind of maximum? Well, sure, I can't have the library be too big or it's not going to be able to fit on in some of the places that we want it to go to. I don't have a number in mind. Some seasons take three years to come out, like Outlander. Well, that's sure, that is, but I would be very annoyed about a cliffhanger then, too. How do you take your coffee? I do not like coffee. Um, do you play from now on to make top ten lists with Mike and Roy? Uh, they'll be on our top ten lists occasionally, for sure. Um, you're going to see top 10 lists from uh, guests. I've already announced that Rodney Smith's coming in to do a top 10 list, so that would be fun. How often do you play Ticket to Ride on the app? Occasionally, usually when I'm traveling. Well, at home, I normally play stuff I, I have an internet connection for or I need one for. So this past weekend, I played a lot of Hearthstone. I really like Hearthstone a lot, so I played it. I usually play it solo. Uh, there's the, uh, the solo mod adventures are really fun, especially the two latest ones, and they're about to come out with a new one this week, I think. I really like the solo adventure things. They're just, they're just really entertaining. I've been binge watching ALF. I forgot how funny it was. I've never been a big fan of ALF. Do you give tours of your studio? Well, when people come in, we show tours of it. We don't open it up to the public, mostly because we're just trying to get work done here. So, I mean, I'm not saying we wouldn't do it, but also there might be things sitting around in the office here that are previews of games that have not been announced. That's not normally the case, but yeah. Um, can you make a series about good popular game designers and or main publishers in their games? Done! I already did those. Have you achieved the you win victory in space base? No. What was the rule change in Viticulture that made you like it more? Uh, in the original Viticulture, there was no grande meeple. So if someone went to a spot... You could not go there. They added a meeple that you could put in a spot no matter who else was there. That's a huge thing. I mean, you can still get blocked from going to the spots you want because you only have one of these guys. But you know every game now or every round, there's one spot you can go to for sure. This especially matters in the last turn for scoring purposes. Is there a game you have never won? Hundreds. Sam's new job is working for Mythic Games. You can find it at online. Just played the exit House of Riddles and wondered if you tried to make the thing at the end. Oh, I don't remember what it was even, so maybe. Are you looking forward to the Amazon Lord of the Rings series? Sure, but have they even like announced anything about that yet or not? I just watched... Yesterday I watched part of Return of the King, and then on Friday I watched, uh, or Thursday I watched uh, The Two Towers. I really like Lord of the Rings. I still think they're really solid movies. Uh, 
have you ever watched Rodney's vlog channel? Yes. Um, what was the biggest surprise game on Mike or Roy's top 40 list so far? I'm just going to have to, you're going to have to go back and watch him and see what my biggest surprised face was, I suppose. Are you truly done with time stories or did you just say that in the heat of the moment? Well, uh, never say never, right? Uh, but I don't know, man. I'll tell you what, I'm not going to make it a priority to play it if it comes in. I'm just not that excited about it at this point in time. I hope to see more top tens this year. Okay, well, I, I think you'll see the same amount as you saw last year. Remember, top tens are, when we do top tens, there are a lot of work. They require everyone in the studio to work on them. And so those and live plays are two very popular things that we do. But they require a lot of input into those. And when we do stuff like that, we're not doing reviews, which is the bread and butter of the Dice Tower, to do these reviews. Not a lot of reviews going up this week, not a lot of reviews going up next week, but we are putting up other videos, and that's all well and good. But then the following week after that, got to get those reviews back up again. Got to do more reviews because, again, that's the focus of the Dice Tower. Any thoughts on the Star Realms Kickstarter? Uh, it seems pretty cool. I looked at it only briefly, but it looked pretty cool. Have you read the Lock and Key graphic novels, and are you interested in a new Netflix show? No, I have not. Um, the Netflix show looks interesting. The trailer looked interesting. I don't know enough about the comics. I went and read up a little bit on them. Uh, I don't know how I would get them. Is there an online thing to, to read those? Because I don't normally buy graphic novels anymore. Um, have you checked out Clone Wars or the Rebel series? No, I haven't. I don't know what it is. I don't watch a ton of... I just haven't watched any of the Star Wars cartoon stuff. I guess I could. I know this is like anathema. I'm just not that big of a Star Wars fan anymore. Mandalorian was great. But maybe I'll watch it at some point. Are you interested in the Witch Witcher's Netflix series? Never heard of it. Toss a coin. Um, my game group is starting Pandemic Legacy Season 2 this week. Is it like a continuation of Season 1, or are there new rules I should start studying? Uh, it's going to have some new rules for you. Um, it's not a direct sequel to season one that you know of or possibly could be or maybe not or who knows and I'm trying not to spoil anything but you don't need to play season one to play season two but it doesn't hurt I used to dislike coffee then I realized I'd only ever been given garbage coffee now I'm a coffee snob and love it but still hate garbage coffee well whatever I don't coffee coffee um, do you have a favorite type of tea? Eh, probably chai tea. Maybe Earl Grey. English breakfast. Those are the three that I, I circle between. Sometimes I have the citrusy teas or the fruity teas occasionally, but I need my kick. Eggnog tea. I have that once in a while. Favorite way to implement Scoundrels of Schoolport into the Lord's Word base game? Isn't there only two ways to do it? Like with Expansion 1 or Expansion 2 or both? I guess three ways? I think I like the expansions. I'm confused on the question. Have you ever flipped a table? Oh, not... Not... Not unless it wasn't for a joke or a video. I don't think ever... What would you like to see gaming conventions do more of? Anything I like to see gaming conventions do more of, I try to do at my own conventions. So I don't really have a, an answer for that. What stands out in your mind as one of your worst board game experiences, not because of the game itself, but because of the other players? 
All my worst board game experiences have been because of players, not the game. Sure, there's bad games, but if there's good players at the table, then who cares? It's a bad game. You're all laughing about how bad the game is together, and you can always agree to ditch the game if everyone thinks it's bad. But if there's good, fun people at the table, never had had a bad gaming experience. Uh, let's see here. Will there be a Black Rose Wars review? You know, they never sent me a copy of it. Or did they not put one in the library? I don't think I... Yeah, I just never got a copy of Black Rose Wars. That's why there was never a review of it. I enjoyed it when we played it for the preview. Um... Any news on the Dice Tower Century promo? Well, I thought I'd put this in an update, but if I haven't, it's a new board for Dice Tower. Uh, Dice Tower, so you'll be able to flip it and has two sides. And I don't know everything that's on the sides because I know Emerson's still putting it together. As soon as I know more, I'll tell you all more. Nemesis got stolen. What's up with people taking your games? Well, it doesn't happen very often. It happens a few times. It's no worries. Can you tell us more about Sam's new job, what we will do in Mythic Games? I don't understand that question, but I think that question would be one for Samuel. Go find him on the thing. I'm not running his new job for him, so he'll explain, and you can find out what he's doing. Uh, I believe they put out a press release on the subject. There's a new documentary produced by BGG's Aldi called The Designers, which goes through a lot of that with new and seasoned designers. Tom and Z have small cameos. That is true, and... That's one of those times where I'm like, really? <laughs> it was very nice of him to put us in that documentary. But I feel like I talked to him for 45 minutes. <laughs> I, 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 I talked a lot for that documentary. And I know they cut things down. But, man, you're like, whew. I, we do not cut that much down when we do stuff because I, I, I don't know. It just bugs me, I guess. It, this happens all the time. Someone will call me. They'll be like, I'd like to interview you for a newspaper article I'm doing. So I'll be like, all right, sure. And talk, 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 talk. The newspaper article comes out. Tom Vassell says, games are good. <laughs> like, great. I'll just send you the quote next time. I know it happens with a lot of journalism and stuff. You know, and that's fine. I'm not upset about it. Just you kind of like, huh. That was a lot of talking I did for no reason. Who's my favorite Star Wars character? Oh, hands down, Baby Yoda. Did the uneven stickers in Clank Legacy annoy anyone at the table? No. Oh, no, Sam. Sam. He always gets bugged by that. It didn't bother me. They weren't that big of a deal. What's the best advice you have for starting a board game review channel? Be different. I mean, what's going to make people watch your channel over another channel? you got to do something that's different than everybody else. When will the top 10 most anticipated games of 2020 be done? It'll be the first week of February you'll see that one. That will actually be the one we do with Rodney Smith. So you'll see us and Rodney Smith together doing our top 10 anticipated games of 2020. I probably should put that list together soon. Uh, breakfast in Paris tea. Earl Grey with lavender. Sounds good. In Japan, they had a cookie tea that was amazing. Well, that would be good. Comicsology has the lock in key comics online. Yeah, I don't... It's Comicsology is, though, you have to pay for them, right? Which... Okay, I, let me rephrase that. I'm not trying to get stuff for free. I just tend to, I like Marvel Unlimited because I read a lot of comics and the price per comic is much cheaper. Comic, Comicsology, I, I would pay for some comics and download them for my thing for sure. I'd have to see what the prices were first though. Are you aware of H.P. Lovecraft's writings on race? He was openly racist, and it's sad that the most popular themes come from his work. I've never seen it mentioned in any reviews. Well, I don't think the reviews... Well, there's a couple things in that regard. First of all, the reviews are based on stuff that is very loosely based on his writings. I mean, like, I don't think Fantasy Flight Arkham... 
Sorry, I just went deaf briefly. Okay. Anyway, I don't think Fantasy Flight's uh, Arkham is like Lovecraft, right? They're like apart. Secondly, the guy's dead. Uh, he's been dead for a really long time. Thirdly, I think you got to be able to separate art from the artist at some degree, or I would not be able to enjoy a lot of stuff that's out there. Like, can you still watch things like The Cosby Show? Uh, and everyone's going to have to make their own decisions on that. I don't know that it's necessary to bring it up every single time. If a designer that I like a lot has very extreme political views in any different direction, doesn't matter, and they make a game, do I need to bring up the designer's political views? I don't think so. I don't think that's anything to do with the game at all. Unless the game itself is political, fine. But if not, um, and I usually find that now, I'm not talking about Lovecraft here. Uh, I usually find that people only want you to mention it when they disagree with whatever that person thinks. Like, they think this way. I don't like what they think. Therefore, you should mention that in your review and say, okay, but if they agreed with you and they were extreme, you probably wouldn't have a problem with that. That's what I find anyway. I just don't see that necessarily as, a, as anything. I don't think uh, Lovecraft is making any money if you buy Eldritch Horror. So it doesn't matter in that specific instance. Uh, for other things... If there was an openly racist designer now, right, and they were making games, would I buy their games and review them? I don't know. Are there games from designers that I would not review based on the actions of that designer? Possibly. But I would be vague in this regard because I, that's just my business in a sense. They just won't get reviewed, and you can try to read it. People would read into that all they want, but it's it's a possibility, and it could, and probably has happened in the past. But uh, I that is a personal decision of my own, and to make it more than that would make would add politics to the channel. And as you all know, I'm against politics being on the Dice Tower channel. Now, there's a difference between politics and saying things that I think are clearly right. So, for example, in the past, I've said that I, I think board gaming has been, in the past, has been a sexist hobby, and we need to make movement to making gaming more welcoming to women. I don't think that's political at all. When I said it, some people are like, that's political. Well, if that's political, I feel like that's problematic. That seems to be like a basic human thing. Um, then again, I believe I know there's other things that people would say are basic human things, and I might think they're political too, so maybe I'm being a hypocrite there in that regard. But at the end of the day, I have to make that call, so I try to keep these things off. And this is a very long roundabout way to answer H.P. Lovecraft being racist, but very specifically to that question, the man is dead. His racist writings are not what I'm seeing in Eldritch Horror, so... I don't think that's a problem. If you do think it's a problem, then I wouldn't play the game with you, and you shouldn't play the game, and I probably wouldn't even talk about the game to you if I knew you had a problem with it. All right. Who did you play Clank Legacy with, and who won? I played it with Sam and, and uh, Roy, and Roy won easily. We unfortunately do not have a very diverse hobby. I might argue with that considerably. What do you mean we don't have a diverse hobby? We have an extremely diverse hobby. When I go to Essen, I see people from all over the world. Uh, there are people from Japan and from Poland and from, I met with a group from South Africa um, and uh, they're, they're all over. Now I think probably you're referring to America itself, possibly, I wouldn't know. But I still would argue that board game hobbying is much more diverse than it used to be. Does it have a ways to go? It does indeed. Uh, here in uh, South Florida, where I am, the, most of the people who come to my game group is, are Hispanic because that's most of the people who live in this area. Uh, are there equal amounts of men and women? No, there's still more men than there is women, but the number of women coming into the game group are growing, and I hope to continue that. I've done my part. I've had six daughters. And they don't come to gaming, so I guess I failed in that regard. Huh. 
<laughs> what mis mistakes do other review channels commonly make that you would advise against? Well, I want to be clear here. I'm not talking about any of the other big name video review channels. All the big name video review channels have their own philosophy. I disagree with some of these philosophies on a very minor basis, right? Like I wouldn't do that, not a big deal. But I'll talk about small video review channels that I've seen fail. Um, the mistakes that they often make are one, a lot of people get really upset when the, the audience does not instantly appear. Like they'll work hard for a while and then they'll say, where is everybody? It's not fair. I don't have all these things. Well, yeah, it's not fair. You know, it's not fair that I happen to make a review channel right when YouTube started getting popular. I'm lucky in that regard. I don't, I don't say otherwise. I don't act like I'm good or better than other people. I got lucky, so it isn't fair. But the mistake then is getting mad about it and quitting rather than just continuing to work hard and trying to build that audience up. Secondly, a lot of review channels come out and they basically, some of the small ones, and they'll say things like, everyone else is doing it wrong, watch us, we're doing it right. Or, not that saying everyone else is doing it wrong, but consistently telling people you're really good doesn't make me think you're good. You just, just, just be good. Don't tell people you're good. Um, and that constant, you know, when someone tells me that they're amazing all the time, I tend to think they're not. <laughs> you know, uh, maybe that's, that's a wrong view on my part. And so I think that's, that's probably it. And people get discouraged by negative comments. And some people quit because of that. And I get that. I mean, it's hard to have a negative, to, to read negative comments. And so those, those would be the biggest mistakes I see that people make. But at the end of the day, if it's not something that's bringing you joy, don't do it. Um, oh, people are talking a lot about T here. With the Lord's War Deep question, I was asking if you prefer to play with Under Mountain, Skullport, or both. Uh, I guess both, but if I picked one, it would be Skullport. Write a curse on the inside of the game with? Yeah, no. Why is Z known as Z? The same reason I call my son Buddy. Do you feel that the beyond the model of the Kickstarter listing was just too confusing for many people? Well, it was confusing for me, so I would imagine that it would be confusing for everybody. I went in there and I was like, I have no I, I went through it and I was like, I have no idea what I would be backing here. I was really confused by the whole thing. I thought the idea is really cool. Hopefully if they relaunch it, they'll relaunch it in a much more easy to comprehend way. Like if you own Conan, you back this. If you own Batman, back this. If you own both, back this. I went in and I was just like, ah, I don't know what the back. If you could crush Jason in one game, what game would it be? Any game that I could beat Jason and I'm happy with. Uh, we played a game last week and I told the guys at the table, I said, Jason is going to win this game. And they were like, okay, they were new. We played. Jason didn't listen to the rules. He got a major rule of the game wrong, like a major scoring rule wrong and still won. I don't know how. I don't know how. But I came in second, so I was happy. Would you do a top 10 hardest games to teach? I think we did a top 10 about that one time, about games that were hard to teach. I don't remember. What does the Dice Tower do with games review where the designers don't want or need it back? Well, first of all, I won't send it back. I, they, designers should not need... I'm assuming you mean publisher. Designers almost never send me the games. It's the publisher who sends me a game. If a publisher said, we're going to send you the game, but we need it back, I would probably say no. The cost to a publisher, so let's say it's a $50 game. It probably costs them $8 to make that game. If I sell one copy of that game, that publisher has probably made their $8 back. So it is not an expensive thing for them to send me that game. Well, there's shipping and there's other things that evolve. And sometimes they send them early and it's not always that cut and dry but it's still a very low price for us reviewing the game. So I wouldn't send it back just as a matter of course. 
and I never feel bad about that. Uh, the, whenever we get rid of our games and we sell them at Dice Tower stuff, they, they go for such low prices that if, if that's a way I'm trying to make money, it is an incredibly bad way to do so. You know, to take a game, spend hours and hours playing and reviewing it, and then sell it for like six bucks. <laughs> yeah. if, if this is a scam, it's a really bad one on our end in that regard. Tom, is the cruise the first time the new library is going to be used? Uh, no, uh, it was used in the Dice Tower Retreat. Um, so, I mean, the whole library, we've had a lot of games since the Retreat for sure, but the library is not that much bigger than the Retreat. And will we add new games between now and then? Doubtful. Um, there is one... New game in the kitchen right now here, and one expansion that I might put in the library. The game is not, I'm not going to talk about what it is because I don't want, that, that's not, that doesn't matter. It's not a big hot game. It's just, it's a game I don't have for the library. If I get it done in time and I can figure out how to get it onto the boat because we've already shipped the stuff to the boat, right? So anything we take on now, I have to carry on. The expansion is, I'll, I'll say the expansion. Expansion is the new expansion or the newer expansion for Abyss. That one I might be able to get on because it's a small one to get on, but then I would have to add it to Abyss and everything. I don't know how hot that is either. That may or may not get on also. I might get some games in the mail today, tomorrow, and Wednesday because once Thursday comes, it's too late. I don't know of any hot games that are on their way towards me, so we'll have to wait and see. Express is a percentage. How likely are we to see a space-based promo on Dice Tower Kickstarter? Zero. Um, Jason says, thanks for answering my difficult question. As a person of the color, I don't feel comfortable playing his games, but I also don't want to bring politics into my group because they don't know about it. You know what? And that makes sense, right? There's a lot of things that I have a problem with in games that if you play it, I don't know that I need to judge you for playing the game. It's easy to judge other people for playing games. Sometimes they don't know things behind games and such. Sometimes it's outright things. Like, for example, I've always felt a little bit uncomfortable with Secret Hitler just because of the name of the game. I know the game does not promote Hitler or fascism, which is a part of the game. But I've just never been a big fan of the name of the game. It just made me feel a little uncomfortable. So I haven't ever gone out of my way to play it. I don't know that people who play it are Nazis. And I gotta be really careful that I don't assume that as a matter of course. And there are games I play. Um, one of the games I really like is Cash and Guns. And in Cash and Guns, you point fake pistols at each other. And I know some people who have a problem with that. They're against gun violence. Maybe they had violence happen in their... And if I knew that, I will A, never play that game with that person, B, not talk about that game person, C, not make a big deal about me playing that game in front of that person. I won't let it stop me from doing the game, because if I stop every game I play because someone's annoyed about it, I would be down to like 20 games. But I need to be sensitive of what other people think about a game and realize that my sensitivities about a game may not be uh, well thought of by others or agreed with by others. Now, I do think mocking other people for their sensitivity to a game, we would be very cautious on that. It's happened to me in the past, like Chaos in the Old World, for example. Uh, I said that I didn't really like the theming of it, that you were some evil god trying to destroy the whole earth, and that the game was played on a, the board is made of stretched, dried human skin. Um, the picture, not, not the actual game. I just said I wasn't really comfortable with that theme. I thought it was a good game, but I wasn't comfortable with that theme. That is still brought up today in Reddit threads where people are like, oh, Tom's so namby-pamby, so religious he can't play this game. And I always think that's ridiculous. First of all, I think you can be against gross stuff without people making fun of you. Um, I think that's, you know, a weird thing. But it bugs me uh, when people say things like that. They're like, oh, you don't like that theme? Ooh. Yeah, okay. I, you can still play it. I don't care. 
it was just too dark for me in, in, in that aspect. And there are some themes that I find, yeah, too dark. There's this, you know, sometimes I might think they're extremely dark and I just, okay, then I don't play it and I move on. It's when you can't move on and you start messing with other people. Now, if you think that a game promotes something wrong in the way people are. See, like, I don't like vulgarity and racism spoken aloud. So I won't permit Cards Against Humanity played at my events that I run. Why? Because you're not keeping it within your group. You are actually saying those things out loud, sometimes shouting them out loud, across the room. And that causes problems. That spreads it outside the game. See, if I play a little doo -doo -doo game and I shoot somebody and they die in the game, right? I'm not actually killing somebody. But if you play Cards Against Humanity, you actually will say a racist thing. You're actually doing the deed, which is why I'm more concerned with that game in particular. Even then, you don't see me going on tirades on my, on my channel against Cards Against Humanity. I'm not a fan of the game, but I'm not going on tirades against it because, again, at the end of the day, everyone has to make their own decisions on the things that they do. My concern is when your decision affects other people. So I will ban Cards Against Humanity from my events because they affect the people around them. Man, I'm getting all serious with my answers today. Sorry. All right. Will we update the 10 games for teaching? Yes. I don't know about the scheduling for Dice Tower West 2021 yet. We'll announce that soon. Do you like getting a sneak peek at GameStone Prototype, or do you prefer waiting for the finished and polished product? I always prefer waiting for the finished and final product. If you were 40k Eldar, what aspect would you join? Oh, I don't even remember. It's been so long. The Rangers. I don't know that I've ever played the game Ice Flow. Um, I liked it when you, Sam, and others reviewed gaming accessories. That seems to have tailed off lately. You know, we haven't got a lot of gaming accessories lately. That's probably why it's tailed off. It's not because of any that we've stopped doing it. I just haven't got many in. Anticipated event 2020, in your opinion, besides Dice Tower stuff. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the UK Games Expo. What's your favorite abstract game from Gerhard Spiel? <sighs> There's a lot of good ones from them. I don't know off the top of my head. I, I'd have to go through and look at them. I apologize. Would you consider using Z's target audience for your reviews? Nope, that's Z's thing. My thing is just talking about the game. Have you got around a Tiny Epic Tactics yet? I have not, although I know that uh, Roy and Mike have played it, and I think they're reviewing it this week. I might be wrong on that, but I know they're, getting, they're going to review it. Have I played the deck building video game Slay the Spire? I have not. Is a review of Aftermath going to be forthcoming? Well, it's going to happen eventually. I just haven't played it yet. Review Darwin's Choice. I hope so. I have 100 hours to spend this month. Dark Tower or the Dice Tower? Oh, don't put me in that situation. I, I would obviously prefer the Dice Tower, but Dark Tower is a pretty good game. What skill do you wish you had? I wish I was a better piano player. Um, don't get me wrong. I understand that for that particular skill, if I really wanted to have it, I could. I could practice more. I could even practice more now. I just don't. I wish I could play honky-tonk piano. I just love the honky-tonk piano. Uh, I can play the piano okay but not great. How did my mechs versus minions game get stolen? We don't know exactly what happened. We think, okay, I think. This is what I think happened. Mechs versus minions and nemesis, for some reason, 
didn't get into a box. We were boxing up our games after last cruise instead of them being on shelves. It didn't get into the box. So I think that they got left on the cruise ship. I think someone on the cruise ship, a crew member maybe, found them, didn't know what to do with them, so took them home, sold them at a yard sale. eBay seller picked them up at the yard sale and then sold them online. And I know this because the nemesis, was it nemesis? Yeah, the nemesis person who got the, the person who got the nemesis game emailed me and offered to send it back. I said no because it's not their fault. They, and they were very nice to alert me to this. I don't know who bought the Max vs. Minions game. I do know it was sold because I saw it on the same eBay seller's page. And you could see on the box is written the weight of the box. And I'm the only person who would write on a box. <laughs> and I know I wrote the weight on Max vs. Minions because we had to weigh everything to go on the cruise ship. And then, of course, if you look on the back, they show the picture of the back of the box, and you can see the Dice Tower Library sticker there. I don't know who got that one. They never contacted me. So, well, whatever. Both companies, Riot Games and Awakened Realms, sent me replacement games. So that's all well and good. Can't get upset. Life goes on. Um, I don't know who. I don't know that anyone's really being nefarious in this. I contacted the eBay seller. They have a five-star rating. Uh, they've sold many, many things. They told me they picked it up at a yard sale in Miami here. I have no reason to disbelieve them. That sounds like a legitimate thing. Um, because you're looking at them, this doesn't look like someone who came on a cruise and stole only those two games. So. When am I next coming to the UK? Probably for the UK Games Expo. Did On Mars make the library? Yes. Is there a game you're ashamed of telling people you love playing? No. I'm on video. What do I care? Do you have a recommendation for dry erase markers and erasers for games like Telestrations? You know, there was a small erase marker that I know was really good, and I think Suzanne said it on her thing, and I can't remember what it is. I just know that I went and ordered them, and they did work very well. But I don't remember what they're called. They were not cheap, though. Um... Thank you for all. Everyone's just saying lots of nice things about Mike and Roy, and I appreciate that. Um, what's my favorite Star Wars ship other than the Millennium Falcon? It's not even the Millennium Falcon. My favorite Star Wars ship is easily the Star Destroyers. I've always liked the Star Destroyers. I thought they were just a cool, cool ship. What do most volunteers do at conventions? Well, a lot of them run the library. A lot of them go around and make sure things are, are picked up and, and that people are having a good time. Some people help out with registration. Uh, there's very specific things, and I know this because I just went over a list of volunteers for Dice Tower East or the different positions that are available for Dice Tower East. How did Chronicles of Crimes get a Dice Tower Seal of Excellence? Has anyone played more than one scenario of that game other than the gimmick of VR? I literally burned my copy. Well, that's kind of a waste of burning. I think uh, Chronicles of Crimes is pretty amazing. I like it a lot. And yes, I've played almost every scenario in the game at this point. So there's that. Using the name of a board game, how do you feel today? <laughs> using the name. I'm looking over at uh, the, 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 I can't use that, can't use that, can't use that, can't use that, won't use that. Ugh. Eh. None of the games in here are doing well for me here. Ah. <laughs> uh. Dice Upon a Time, how's that? It's the only one in here I can see which name I can use. <laughs> um, oh, I did review Ice Flow. Well, maybe I'm not remembering the game then. I'll type it in here. Ice Flow Dice Tower. Oh, well, it's not even that long ago. Oh, you're right. I did play this one. Sorry, the name, 
the name got confusing for me. Uh, have you heard why? Def no. Someone said, have you heard why Defenders of the Realm 2nd Edition has been delayed? I don't work for Eagle Griffin. I get asked this all the time. People are like, so when's this game coming out? I, I don't know. I don't work for those companies. I wish there was a Dice Tower TV channel. Why? You have one. It's just YouTube. YouTube's better than TV. Um, why didn't King Saloma get more buzz? The same reason 9,000 games last year didn't get more buzz. There's just a ton of games. They're not all going to be able to get the same amount of buzz. Do you ever review print and play games? I do not. Have I heard of Fortune Street and a Nintendo Wii? I have not. I haven't played in a Nintendo Wii in ages anyway. I'm all about the Switch. When are you guys continuing the top 100? In three hours. It sucks that someone stole your games, but how fun was it to track them down on eBay? I felt like a detective. I was like, oh, I will find this out. Any chance of a visit to Canada in the future? Canada. Well, I'm coming up to Niagara Falls as as we do once a year in April. And I'll probably walk across into Canada at that point because I really like the Canadian side of Niagara Falls. But I don't know that I'm doing anything else for Canada this year. I don't have anything planned. Does wearing hats make you bald? Not even close, man. I'm not even thinning. I got gorgeous hair. Gorgeous. Not really. But... I'm not bald at all, or balding. And I still wear hats. Why? Because I like hats. I don't have gorgeous hair. I got these two colics that stick up in the back, and they have to be constantly cut, or I look like a demon. My true nature comes out. I also got a colic in the front. And I got. if you shave me, you'll see, like, big uh, moles all over my head. It's really gross and disgusting, like an alien. So hat it is. Would you consider selling me one of your hats? Nope. Uh, let's see here. Do I have a Calyx type shelving here for my hat collection? Nope. Just keep them at the top of a closet. <laughs> Calyx hats. That'd be funny. Um, how do you balance serious criticism of a game versus entertaining your audience and keeping the review short, sharp and to the point? I don't know. I just do it. And you might argue that I don't do a very good job at it, which is possible. Someone's going to do Yggdrasil Chronicles. I think Z is going to, because I'm pretty sure it's at his house. Uh, Slay the Spire. Some people keep talking about Slay the Spire. Maybe I'll give that one a try. Can you show us a bit behind the curtains and explain how Sheriff of Nottingham moved from Arcane Wonders to come on? No, that's behind the that's behind the curtain business stuff, and that's stuff happens all the time in the business. Uh, different games get sold and moved around, so that's just how that worked. Have you heard of the Ring Fit Adventure for Switch? Yeah, I saw it. Uh, Canadian side of Niagara Falls is so much better. Oh, it's amazing. You're on the New York side, and you're like, oh, this place looks like a run-down ghost town. But the Canadian side looks better. Do the socks make the hair on your feet fall off? That'd be nice. Do you plan to mark your game's property of the Dice Tower? If you take this game, we'll track you down. Maybe. What's your caffeine intake on an average weekday? Not much, really. I drink a cup of tea in the morning. That's about it. I would argue that of all the people in the vicinity of my voice right now, I have the uh, lowest caffeine intake by a mile. <laughs> I drink mostly water. <laughs> Will there be a 2019 blooper video this year? No, unfortunately. We didn't have enough recorded bloopers. And that's not to say that we uh, don't make bloopers, right? We, we certainly do a lot of them. They just A lot of them didn't get recorded. We also do a lot of live stuff now. So the bloopers were out there, and it just it didn't work out as well. So, alrighty. Well, that's it. I need to get ready for lots of things. Dice Tower Kickstarter. DiceTowerKickstarter.com. Check it out. Dice Tower Cruise is about to go. I need to get prepared for that. Dice Tower West is a month away. We need to get prepared for that. And we got videos to do. Top 100 coming up later today at 2 o'clock.
We'll see you guys then. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching Q&A on the Dice Tower. Welcome to the first 2020 Dice Tower Olympics here. So we have two teams. Now these two teams seem to be pretty evenly spread. We have the Purple Horde. Um, really, uh, I, I never understood why these teams consistently call themselves the Horde. Doesn't, doesn't any of them have like a more original name? Well, Sam, uh, my name ain't Sam, my name is Jed. Sorry, it's easy to get people confused. That's just what they do. Over here, we have the, um, the Iowan rounders now these have round dice round dice are pretty cool you can see here they're demoing because they actually stop thanks to weights that are in them it's a pretty neat thing jed wow that is pretty cool Alrighty. so we're going to uh these are going to be going up so the rounders though also have some 20 sided 12 sided 10 sided in their mix but there are more of the horde so it seems to be an even matchup let's see what happens all righty here we go and it starts off with the Rounders winning one. And that's a pretty, uh, not a fantastic start there, but you know, hey, these things happen. Continuing on. Oh, and there's one Rounder out of the game. So it's an even spread there. Another Rounder out of the game. A tie, both out of the game. Ties are pretty brutal in this game. And uh, one of the reasons for that was in the past, there were people who said that ties were a joint victory. And when that happened, there was the great tie uprising of 2014. It was pretty brutal. And in fact, the tie strangler actually came from this period. I didn't know any of that. Well, that's because you're dumb. Uh, yeah, well, I'm still new to all this. Yep. Well, so at a first initial blush here, we're seeing not a lot of, uh, we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It does seem to be a dead heat here with five winners each, but the, uh, the 12 siders have not yet entered the fray, which is kind of an interesting thing here. Often, those dice will come out as a way just to kind of intimidate everybody in the mixed. Anyhow, like I was saying, the great Thai rebellion that happened, yeah, tell me more, I am, and, and so shut up and listen, uh, happened because this whole, you know, ties result in a shared victory, it's found that people don't really like shared victories very much. And so when that happened, they decided that ties would be unfriendly and both would be out. We think that it's probably a punishment for some of the violence that happened during that time. Hmm. I would say that's interesting, but I'm not convinced that it's true. Meanwhile, uh, looks like the rounding team is not doing so hot. Uh, many of them have been eliminated from the match already. So that's a pretty good start for the Horde. But now the Horde's about to face a beatdown, probably, because here comes the 20 sided Yep. 11 definitely beats a 3. So this is where we're going to watch them get whopped. Oh, a 12 side. It was just knocked out of the match. That's a 1. <laughs> does not beat an 11. That's for sure. Another 20 side. It, 13 beating a 4. So I'm a little confused here. Why did they even allow a 20 go up to go up against a 6? Ah, because it's funny. That doesn't seem like a very good reason. A 9 beats a 6. Right, I mean, the best they can do is a six. Yeah, but when the victory comes, like that five beating a two, it's all the sweeter, Jed. Do you understand nothing about the strategery of the entertainment of dice? Did you not just see three of the tens get beaten in a row? Yeah, but I also just saw a 17 beat a three. Ah, Jed, you just don't understand the vagaries of how this works.
That one says 60. Well, it's actually a 6. That is how 100-sided dice work. 100-sided doesn't even make any sense. Yeah, well, Jed, your face doesn't make any sense. And yet, we still let you on the show. That 20-sided rolled a 4 and still 1. Not a single 20-sided has been taken out yet. And it's looking like that may never happen. Alrighty. Well, the 20-sided seemed to do well. This one actually jumped out, but a 10 still beats a 3. So, oh, of the polynomial ones, oh, there's one just lost. So five of them lost, but the rest have won, and not a single 20-sided was taken out. Well, Jed, you're learning. A 9 beats a 6. That's got to be discouraging, though, when your best is a 6. Well, that's how competition works. All right. It's kind of like the uh, adults versus kids arm wrestling tournaments. There is no such thing. Ah, you need to look on the dark web. And a nine beats a five. All righty. So the horde is still looking strong, but the, poly the polyhedral dice really, really went ahead there. All righty. Well, I still, the numbers just seem to not make any sense here. And there goes another rounder. The rounds at a dice don't seem to be doing that well. Well, never mind. One just won. But there's only a few left in the match. And there goes another one out. Uh, it's possible they were just brought in for their name. Wow, Jed. It's like you have a thought bouncing around in your head there. That's correct. I'm pretty sure the polynomials don't need them at all. Two of them have stayed in the match. Which is not really good. The rest have been eliminated one by one. Up, oh, three are now still in the match. Up, oh, and there goes another one out. Poof! That was a bad round there. But now we're about to probably see the polynomials do really well here. A four beating a one for sure. A 19 beating a two. A 20 beating a 2, but remember the rules. A 20 can take out two twos. Since when is that a rule? Why is that even a rule? I don't know, Bob. My name's Jed. Oh, yeah. I used to work with a guy called Bob, but he quit because of, I don't know why. Maybe it's because you made fun of him. A 5 beat a 3. The crowd goes wild. A 20-sided die finally goes out. A 6 beating a 2. Another one has gone down. What is going on? A 6 beats an 8. Nope. See you later, 6. Huh, I'm starting to think that by sheer numbers, it is slightly possible for the Horde to win. Yes, Bob. I'm Jed. Yes, Jed. Now you, you're finally seeing it. Maybe you'll become an announcer like me someday. Uh, I'm only doing this because, uh, oh, it's five beats of one. I'm only doing this because I needed the money. Four beats of three. A six beats a four. All righty. It's not looking too good for the rounder team here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think the horde may got it. Hmm. Six beats a four. There goes another rounder. And another rounder. There's only one rounder left. Six beating a three. Still stays in it. All righty. We have four, five 20 sided left. They're going to go last here. Let's. Oh, there goes one of the 10 side. It's out. Huh. So you're saying that at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how many sides we have, that we're all the same. No, Jed. No one is saying that sort of nonsense. Don't try to read any kind of story lesson into this. 14 beats a 5. 12 beats a 3. 20 beats 2. <laughs> Wait, so why doesn't a 6 then beat 2? Shut up, Jed. 18 beats a 1. And a 5 and a 5. Oh, there goes a 20. Sacrificial play. Oh, the horde is smaller. There is only 7 dice left against uh, 10, 20, 27, 2, 7. The Horde has 20 more dice. This is crazy. Nine beats a one. Last rounder in the game has just been eliminated. Hmm. 
10 beats a 3. Here comes the 420 side. It's a 2 beats a 1. He had a chance, and he lost. 20 takes out 2. Wasn't there a rule that multiple dice could go together? I think I heard that. A 6 beats a 3. Yes, but the Purple Horde refuses to do that. A 7 beats a 2. All righty. There's only five dice left. Oh, there goes a two. A three wins. There's only three. A six beats a five. Woo! I, I don't know that a 15 beats a six. Five beats a three. All the 12 sided are now gone. A 10 beats a two. All right, there's some discussion here. The 10 side is now going to play by himself until he's eliminated. 8 beats a 6. 9 beats a 4. He's up to 2. 8 beats a 2. He's up to 3. 2. Oh, he's been defeated. All right, the 20 sides are going to try that now. There is 12, 15, 16 to 2. Is it possible for two 20 sided to beat 16 sixes? Well, for my experience in Dungeons and Dragons, Jed, I'm sleeping. Stop with the color commentary. I thought that's why you hired me. Nope. Then, then, then why did you hire me? I didn't. 19 beats a two. 20 beats a one and two ones. There's some people who think that when a 20 and a one are rolled, a six beat a five. We're down to one 20 sided against 11 sixes. Here we go. 20 beats a five, that's two. That's it. It's 120 against nine. Six beats a three, and the horde wins! Ah, oh no, man, once again, look at this. They knocked over the goalposts and they're running around and oh, they're carrying off the goalposts. Is that even legal? Well, whatever. The, no, so, so sad there, so sad. Oh no, look what they're doing now.